Here's the step-by-step -step list of what you need to do in order to release your first song. You don't have to watch this video anymore, but bear with me because I have many tips for each and every single one of those areas and because I've just released my first song, I think they're gonna be pretty helpful. If you wanna hear my music, of course, head down to the description down below. So the first thing on our list is learning to play our instruments. Maybe you want to make something with this exact thing, a like MIDI keyboard. Learn to play whatever you want in your music. And my number one tip is what you've heard a million times already, but it's really, really so goddamn important and you're missing out your whole musical career because of this. Keep a consistent practice schedule and keep learning new things. Number one is the frequency triangle for choosing your instrument. I have one thing that's like a cheat code. Oh my God, you can do so much. Keep learning new things because if you like still play the same old stuff, you aren't gonna make yourself a better guitar player. Or if you keep singing the same stuff, you aren't gonna become a better singer. Or if you don't learn anything on the MIDI keyboard, you're not gonna become better. <laughs> That's it. I myself practice for about three to four hours a day. That's focused practice and what keeps me going, that's tip number two, is just you have to love what you do. Pick things that seem interesting to you or you like are already interested in them and drill those. Pick another thing that you're interested in, drill that and you're gonna become a, again, huge wall of knowledge of your instrument or your voice. So the second thing we're gonna talk about is production and songwriting. And these are probably even more important than getting really, really good at your instrument because you can be mediocre at your instrument, have awesome songwriting and production skills and you will go totally, totally insane with your songs. Here are five tips to improve yourself as a songwriter and a producer. Okay. Tip number one is layer your instruments to get a fatter sound. Instead of using EQ to make the bass bassier or to make the high end of the bass high, like high end dear, if, <laughs> if that's a word, you can use a different sample or a different bass to get exactly that and it sounds so much better. Like the difference between just boosting your like 4K on the bass and actually using a bass that has the great high end and pairing that with a bass that has some nice low end it gives it gives you so much more than just using the EQ. Another example of that would be if you have some choirs or some paddy synths. You can maybe use violins and pen violins to the left and the paddy synths or the choirs to the right. Or you can pair the choirs with the paddy synths. You get the idea. You want to make a different sound and these two sounds combined are so much better than just using one sound. Yeah, that's my number one tip and this really helps. Oh my god. This is dangerous. Tip number two goes very well with tip number one and that's to use good or awesome sounding sounds instead of shitty sounds. Sound selection is one of the most important things you can do for your song to sound professional. Yeah, it's not EQ, it's not mixing, good sound selection and layering those great sounds is what gives you professional productions. It might be sometimes expensive, but I have one thing that's like a cheat code and that's buying an audio interface and with that almost always come professional sounding VST instruments and pro level audio effects and you can also find a lot of stuff online. I picked five of my favorites and put them in the description down below for you to check out. Yeah, that's how sweet I am. <laughs> Are you there? Yeah. Okay, if you know any production or songwriting or any tips on other subjects we're gonna talk about in this video, 
make sure to leave a comment down below so you can help fellow musicians on becoming an actual artist. Yeah, thanks a lot for each and every single comment. Let's get back to it. Okay, here are another three tips for the production. We're gonna go through these fast so we can get to the mixing part. Number one is the frequency triangle for choosing your instruments. And that's that in the low end, we have only, only this portion of the triangle, but in the high end, we have this portion of the triangle. It's like this. Yeah, here's the low end, here's the high end. You can put so much in the high end, but very few stuff in the low end. So keep your low end simple to the bass and kick drum and sometimes maybe some hits. In the high end, you have a lot more room for stuff. And basically what the frequency triangle does for you is it makes you realize that you don't want each instrument playing at the same octave. You would have this in the frequency triangle, everything would fight for your attention and the listener's attention and you do not want that. So keep your instruments spread out across this frequency range and you can have a lot more in the high end. So that's the frequency triangle. This tip was more of the songwriting type of tip in which like when you're writing the song you have to think which instrument it's gonna be in which octave and that's gonna help you really really so much my god my neck hurts from looking up tip number four is risers and hits are your friend use them <laughs> risers and impacts make a song from to goddamn pro level so think of each riser individually you can change those you can maybe put on some flanger effects you can put on some panning effects. I really love to do some risers and you can do them from anything. I did some from a distorted like recorder, which <laughs> yeah, you can put on distortion on anything and then make a riser out of it. Or you can make a riser from just reversing a sound and automating the volume. Oh my God, you can do so much. For hits you can use like any hit you find online which is copyright free or you can make yourself a hit but I don't have much experience with that. And the fifth tip is again more of a songwriting tip and that's that music theory is actually your friend. Never has anyone learned some music theory and became worse at their instrument. Like that just doesn't work. Okay, so this next section is all about mixing. Again, I have five tips for you to get started. Tip number one, and this tip you aren't gonna wanna hear, but it's the most important one for mixing. And it's to level your instruments based off of a reference track. A reference track is a song that is similar to your song and is similar to that with its sound, or with its genre. So find a song that is similar to yours, put it into your project, put the mp3 or WAV file into your project and from that you have to level out kind of your stereo output of your track with the output of that track because the track is already mastered so it's gonna be louder than yours in the mixing stage and then level your instruments with each other based off of the reference track and do this very accurately like very very accurately me myself too when doing my first song i wanted to get to the side chaining stuff and eq and compression and limiting and all that stuff and reverb and delay oh my god but what really gets your track to the pro level is getting a really really great level of your instruments out of the way in the first stage of mixing yeah that's what makes pro mixes sound pro i'm not a pro mixer by any means but yeah i've learned some stuff <laughs> i found it the hard way <laughs> having to remix my song like two to three times because it wasn't leveled it, like correctly yeah you don't have to. Tip number two, use EQ to carve out space in the mix so your instruments don't fight with each other. For example, you don't need 50 Hz in your crash cymbal. No, 
You don't. You need to think about the production thing where you've chosen the octaves in which each instrument is gonna sit at and EQ the instruments depending on that. And after you carve out the space, make sure each sound sounds great in the full mix. So your kick sounds great, your snare sounds great, everything sounds great. And you can use the reference track for that also. Next up, what I use is compression. So put on compression on all the stuff that needs compression, which are mostly the drums, maybe on the guitar. If some notes are louder than the others and you don't want that, perhaps in a solo. So put on compression on your guitar. Next up, your vocal. Yeah, your vocal needs a lot of compression. <laughs> and all the stuff you can imagine having compression on, put it on there if it sounds better. Again, if it sounds better. And for that, I have one tip you can use in each of those sections, like production, learning your instrument, mixing. If it doesn't serve the song's purpose, Remove it, it has to go. I cannot count how many times I've re-recorded the lead guitar in my first song. It was 50, maybe even more times. Because it just didn't serve the song's purpose. It was kind of off the entire time. And then once I figured it out and I couldn't be happier with like getting the time in and really changing the stuff that had to go. This one is all about your home studio. If you don't have great speakers and a great sounding room, you have to use the reference track and also test your song like 50 times on different speakers. I had to do this also because I've completely blown out the subs on the kick. They were completely blown out and I didn't hear that until I played it on a system with a subwoofer and compared it to a different track and oh my god those subs were oh my god it was terrible so if you don't have a great sounding room and monitors you need to reference the hell out of the mix and then still you have to play it on different sound systems which is very annoying the next version is getting a set of really really quality studio headphones but still i would kind of compare it to a reference track if they're not completely flat on the frequency spectrum so that was for the mixing part and now for the mastering so you've written your song you did the production stuff you have all the sound selection sound layering risers and mixing out of the way and you hit export what after that well then we have to master the track in order for it to be as loud as the competitor tracks because what's loud sounds better to the ear. That's a mixing problem actually too. When A being something and the second thing is louder, you're gonna think it's, it's just better. That's how our human ears work. And yeah, I've experienced at least this firsthand. <laughs> So, in order to master your tracks, you're gonna need some things. The first one being a limiter. A limiter is actually a compressor with a really, really high ratio. And what you do with the limiter is you bring up the whole song and with the output knob, you put it at about minus 0.1 dB. And that makes sure that nothing gets past that. Nothing gets past minus 0.1 dB, nothing it will get ducked. Next up we have EQ and with that we want to get the sound balanced throughout the whole frequency spectrum so it suits our ears and you can use a reference track for that also. Next up is saturation and a little bit of saturation goes a long way so saturation on your tracks and after that the last thing you just want to add in a differ effect which gets rid of any quantization distortion and replaces it with white noise yeah it just makes your tracks better after that make sure that you have a fade in and a fade out at the end of the song so there aren't any pops and you hit export make sure to use the settings your distributor wants you to like use and you're ready to release your goddamn first song well, if you've got yourself a distributor, a distributor is a page or a company that distributes your music to all the 
music services. Spotify doesn't actually collaborate with independent artists. You have to go through the distributor way. And the distributor I am personally using is Amuse. You can use DistroKid, TuneCore, whatever. You just need to compare the versions for yourself and for your personal needs as an artist. And after that, you just need to get a profile, profile picture, a banner and a profile art cover for your song and you're ready to release. Now you can press release and you've got yourself the first song released. Next up is like promotion and stuff like that, but I won't get into that in today's video. You've got yourself your first song release. I hope you've got a lot out of this video because if I had a video like this in the beginning where I had everything in one place I would be so goddamn excited and if you have any other tips make sure to put them in the comment section down below. I really hope this video brought you something and if so make sure to hit the like button Subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and now make sure to watch this video I'll see you then Goodbye